Hi, my name is Yi Yao. In this talk, I will talk about OS DBTK VXLAN and VLAN TSO, GRO and GSO implementation and the status update. Here are our goals to achieve. We need to run OS DBTK in OpenStack production environment. We need to support UFO for VM. We need to support GRO, GSO for VLAN and uh, VXLAN. We need to support uh, VXLAN TSO. We need to support uh, VXLAN UFO. Uh, finally, we hope VM to VM TCP can reach light speed in VXLAN case. We hope VM to VM UDP also can reach light speed in VXLAN case. Here, let's check our implementation standards. Uh, we have the UFO support. Here you can see in VM, UDP fragment uh, offload is all. Of course, we need to add this UFO option to Cremu uh, to support this. Uh, we have the IPv4, GL, and uh, GSO support. Uh, actually, uh, since DBTK 17.11, it can support uh, VLAN TCP GL, VXLAN TCP GL, VLAN TCP GSO, VXLAN TCP GSO, and uh, VLAN UDP GSO. I and and the VLAN UDP GL, VXLAN UDP GL, and the VXLAN UDP GSO. So in DBTK 20.11 release, it can support these features. Uh, but for IPv6, I'm still doing them. For VXLAN TSO support, my patch is ready. You know, VXLAN TSO is very important to achieve VM to VM TCP line speed. Actually, many leaks can support VXLAN TSO, for example, Intel XL710, Intel E810 and uh, Mellanox Connect X. Uh, for VXLAN UFO support, we have a plan. Actually, some NICs can support UFO and uh, VXLAN UFO. For example, Intel IGC driver, uh, Intel E8 11, uh, E8 10, and uh, TXGB, uh, this is from China based vendor. In principle, um, UDP should have better performance than TCP, but in fact, it's not. Uh, why? Because TCP can be offloaded by hardware leak, but uh, UDP cannot. So. If we have VXLAN UFO and uh, UFO support in hardware leak, we can get good performance number for UDP. Here we got TCP and the UDP performance number uh, in this test setup. Here, setup is uh, simple. Uh, we don't have OpenStack. We don't have a call track. Um, we don't have um, any other open flow entry except uh, default entry. Here, for current uh, OS, TCP power number is good, but uh, UDP power number is bad. It's about 3 Gbps. If we use small UDP packet, 
the number is 2.2 it's uh, worse but if we apply the our VXLAN TSO patchy series you can see TCP performance number is good UDP performance number is better here we use uh, UFO, so no UDP fragmentation. Even if we disable UFO, UDP number is still good. It's uh, 6 gigabit per second. It's uh, two times this number. If we disable, if we enable call track, you can see we have big performance drop. Here are open flow rules for call track. So we think we need to optimize call track implementation. Here are column charts you can see we can reach light speed for TCP and UDP. If we enable core track, we can see big performance drop. Here column charts can show you very obviously. But in OpenStack environment, the performance numbers are very different. Here, if we use the old OS, you can see TCP performance number is 2.32. UDP performance number is similar. But if we apply the our VXLAN TSO patch series, TCP number is good. UDP number is also good, but uh, they are not light speed. For floating IP, if we use the old OS version, TCP performance number and the UDP performance number are very bad. It's about 100 um, megabit per second. But if we used VXLAN TSO patch series TCP number is good UDP number is also good here column charts can show you performance improvement is big Here for floating IP, improvement is very, very big. For TAP and VETH performance, current OS use uh, OS vSwitch D thread to handle them. But uh, I have developed uh, patches to improve performance if we use PMD threads to handle them we can get much better performance here for VETH to VETH TCP and VETH to VETH UDP you can see if we don't have PMD support the number is this but if we use PMD threads to handle them we can see this big number. For TCP, it's about uh, more than three times the improvement. For UDP, it's uh, about more than two times improvement. For tap to tap performance, it's uh, much better. Right? Even for uh, this, if we use PMD thread, we can still get much better performance.
here quantum charts can show you very noticeable I also developed uh, patches to support uh, temp interfaces, uh, statistics, and status update. Because OS uh, don't know uh, network names best for temp interfaces, so it cannot get this information. Here, I applied my patches. You can see interface uh, state is up we can see MAC address MTU network namespace and statistics of course uh, uh, we have some no issues if we uh, use secure group in OpenStack, we can see uh, performance number has a big drop. But if we enable the GL, the performance number is normal. So GL is very important in this case. We have implemented the GSO, but the GSO performance is not good. So we need to optimize. Uh, the biggest issue is if we restart uh, OS vSwitch D, temp interface cannot work because they are in network namespace. OS don't know this network namespace. We also found if we add more and more temp and uh, with interfaces, uh, we can see a big performance drop. Uh, we need to support multi-segmented M buffer because GL and GSO depend on this. But before this effort uh, was rejected because of some crash issue. So it's a big challenge. Uh, from uh, OpenStack performance number, uh, we can see we cannot reach a uh, light speed. So we think uh, we have uh, uh, some issue in core track implementation and uh, some other stuff. So we need to optimize them for ipv6 support we need to develop gso and gl i'm still struggling to do this okay let's uh, summarize vxlan tso is a very great feature it's very important to achieve VM to VM light speed. So I think OS community should take this. Uh, last year I talked about OS DBDK issues in OpenStack. Actually, I have uh, developed many patches to fix them. So it's all the way to production environment. But uh, we still have some roadblocks to remove. Multi-segmented MBUF support, GL and GSO support, uh, PMD support for V teacher and the TAP, TAP. Mm, restart issue for TAP. Okay. That's all. I'm done. Thank you.